Life is an experience, as you see here, or rather, a set of experiences. These experiences are what shape our life. These experiences are what build our personality. There are good experiences. Good experiences boost our confidence, catalyze our growth, and even gives us good memories. But there are also bad experiences that break us, disturb us, makes us question our actions, our decisions, and even our very own existence. Life is actually a combination of good and bad experiences. A diverse set of experiences is what makes life a continuous learning growth, a learning curve. A diverse set of experiences, good and bad, has what has actually formed the foundation for human evolution. And that is what life actually looks like. Humans did not know everything when they evolved. Humans actually learned through experience. They learned through failures. They learned through successes. And I am here today to share one very small experience out of all that I've gone through in my life. And I'm here to ask you one question. That when you take a leap of faith, why do you think so much? You take, take a leap of faith, what's the worst that can happen? Hello, my name is Dhanisha. I am a mountaineer, a designer, an engineer, and an entrepreneur. You can call me whatever you wish in the context of our discussion. I actually work at BCG as a strategic designer, and that's what we do at BCG X. We build corporate ventures, we build corporate startups. I've done my master's from IIT Delhi in design, and I have done my engineering from here, KJ Somaya, College of Engineering, Somaya Vidya Vihar. That is not an AI-generated image. That is actually me. I know it comes as a shock. That is also me. And that is also me. I have been trekking and mountaineering in the Himalayas for almost a decade now. I have also made a lot of travel films on all my Himalayan pursuits and my local treks and travel experiences and road trips. This is one of my companies. I have founded three companies in the last six years. One of them was a travel startup called Backpack Expeditions, where I organized Himalayan treks for friends and family and then turned out to become a good enough business. My second company was 197 Entertainment, an influencer marketing agency and a social media marketing company during COVID. And my latest venture, which was actually funded at the campus Shark Tank event at IIT Delhi, was the Lit Company, a design and merchandising firm. I create content on YouTube. I shared my entire journey of how I got into IIT. I just made a video and actually went to a lot of people. And I started to build a community called the Dream Team, where I mentored almost 3,000 students on getting into design intense um, colleges for IIT and NID, giving seed and NID. So this is. My dream team, we have about 3,000 members and over 100 admissions to that group on Telegram. I take design workshops. I also have mentored a lot of students and startups at IIT Bombay and Ideathons and design thinking workshops, etc. This is one of the workshops I did at Somaya Vidya Vihar at Idil. I have led national and international events, Maker Mela being one of them. I can see a few smiles around. And a lot of other events in Idil, in Somaya, as well as in IIT. And I've been given a lot of awards for my social work, for my mentorship, for education, for technology, et cetera, et cetera. I also mentor students for public speaking, personality development skills, life skills, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm one of the top 1% members for a few months on an online platform called ADB List. I think that's enough flex from my side for you to start understanding and listening to what I'm going to say and actually believing in what I say. So this is a picture of me. That, that, not me, I'm the guy holding the baby. I know there are two babies in the frame. That's me, 17 years old, and I, that's when I took my first leap of faith. That's me trekking to a monastery in Bhutan. At the age of 17, my mother will kill me, but she knows that I lied to her and went for a solo trip. I actually wanted to go for a Himalayan trek called Sandakfu, which is the highest peak of West Bengal, but then I carried forward, not telling her that I went to another country by foot from Darjeeling to Sikkim to Bhutan. And uh, it was actually a solo trip where I met one of my friends. And it's a very interesting story here. That's I'll relate to uh, for my journey of entrepreneurship. One day we were in the city, capital city of Bhutan called Thimpu. And we were going to a city called Punakha. And we had two or three days of heavy travel. So we were sleeping in the bus on the way. And uh, while we entered Punakha, there was a uh, entry point where we were supposed to show some documents or some permission letter, which we didn't know that exists. We entered Punakha. It's one of the best places for, for sunsets in the world. We experienced the entire day. On the way back, we were browsing through photos on the bus. And um, the, the exit point came in where the conductor was like, hey, can you guys please go and stamp your exit papers? I'm like, what is that? So me and my friend went down. The police over there was like, give us your papers. We had no papers back then. We didn't know about all this. 
he said, uh, this is an exit paper, you need to get it stamped on the end. Yeah, an exit, we were like, sir, we don't have So he's like, yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem, 19,000 fine per person, go. 19,000, my entire tip for eight days was 10,000 per person. Me and my friend didn't know what to do. What we did is that we started calling people. Surprisingly, and fortunately, one of his friends studying in his college was from Bhutan, and his father was in the ministry. He called up his father, and that police was like, oh, what are you guys doing this, that, suddenly again, the phone, sorry, sir, sorry, 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 sorry. He gave the phone to the official, and they let us go. The ministry guy came to collect us, took him to his house, and we had a lavish dinner at his place. Instead of us actually going to jail, we were actually having a dinner at the ministry official's house. That's where I learned my first state of entrepreneurship, my first lesson of entrepreneurship, embracing uncertainty. You don't know, in the startup world as an entrepreneur, even in the world of design and innovation, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to be your next step. From this experience, I learned that in life, no matter what happens, you need to make sure that whatever happens, you are ready to deal with it. You cannot control situations in your life, but you can control how you respond to them. I also wrote an article about this, which got published in an online issue at that point of time, called Audust. Do you see this picture? This photo is taken right before I was going to die. No, really. I was on this trek called Hoopkund, which is at 15,000 feet above sea level in the deep areas, remote areas of Uttarakhand. So I was on this trek, and me and my friends, we were trekking up on the last day, uh, trying to hit the summit. I clicked this picture. We started walking up. And somewhere around 15,500 feet, I started feeling nauseatic. I started getting a thumping headache. I started feeling pukish. And I just fell unconscious. I had it AMS. For those who don't know, AMS is high altitude. It's a, it's a acute mountain sickness syndrome called high altitude cerebral edema and high altitude pulmonary edema. That's the two conditions it leads to. So I hit AMS. I gained consciousness after 10 minutes, I think. And I was surrounded by my friends and the tech leader. My tech leader came to me and said, it's hogya tumaya. You can now turn back and go. And I was like, can you see? I can see the summit from here. I could literally see the summit from there. It's 200 feet away, and you're telling me to go back? He's like, it's, it's a life and death situation. You have to. And I said, no, I cannot. I, can, I can't. I've walked for eight days, and you're telling me to go back? I saw the summit. I'm like, no, deep. I am not going to go back. So I took the disk. I told him that I'll make it. The entire group submitted successfully after in the next half an hour. He's the summit, took my pictures, came back to safety, all safely back to base camp. This experience actually taught me the next trait of entrepreneurship, taking risks. In the startup world as an entrepreneur, you have to take risks. You cannot sit heart by heart, dalke, that everything's going to happen on your own. You have to be wild. You have to be innovative. You have to be robust. You have to understand that as an entrepreneur, if you don't take risks, you won't get the reward. This picture is also taken before someone else was going to die. I had a friend with me on one of the texts. This is a picture in Spiti Valley, a trans Himalayan trek called Hamta Pass from Manali to Spiti at 14,000 feet. I had a friend of me, both of us were having a discussion, just like this, three feet away. And uh, she clicked a picture of me, and uh, while discussing, suddenly someone from the top shouted, Rockfall, Rockfall, watch out, Rockfall. And the, I didn't get time to react. She was standing here. I saw someone shouting, I looked up, and I saw this huge piece of rock bounce off the mountain and hit my friend over here, right on the head, in front of me. Valley, mountain, friend, rock. The rock hit her, she fell, I grabbed her bag, pulled her back, and I could, there was nothing left. I could just see everything splurting out, my entire clothes were full of blood. From that moment onwards, my tech leader coming up to me, the other friends, other group members, getting all our monkey caps out, our scarves. I don't remember what happened. I was, it was all a blur. She, was, she went into an epileptic attack. And I could, I can, I'm just getting goosebumps as I remember this incident again. And she got an epileptic attack in front of me. I saw her go still. I saw her come back. I saw her bleed. I saw her laugh. I saw her cry. Everything happened in those 10 minutes. We got her down to Spitri Valley. We got her to the base camp. We got to the base camp. Luckily, there was a doctor from another group who had butterfly stitches or something of that sort. We treated her on the spot, covered her head. And we were supposed to go back that day from base camp. But then, as the new state of entrepreneurship, I'm going to show you. This is in making. 
every decision that I made from that point onwards till she got back to Manali. The doctor said in Manali, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. It's too complicated a case. We took her to Delhi. From Delhi, she came back to Bombay, all safely to her parents. And right now, she's in Canada doing her master's right now. But every single moment in that experience, each and every second, every decision that I took, my tech leader took, my teammates took, going to the army camp to find out if a helicopter can come and airlift us, the landslide, and the, the night we spent trying to make sure that she's not getting fever, there's no infection. I, can't, I can recollect a hundred things that happened in that experience. But that taught me the power of decision making. As a founder, as an entrepreneur in the last three startups, I have been the founder and the CEO, and I have realized how important it is to be a decisive human being if you want to run your own startup. Everybody in the team, every single buddy counts on you. Everybody looks up to you. Now, when there's a crisis, when there's a situation, damage control is your game. You are the person who has to run the show. This is just a picture of me crying. There's no relevance as such. But I'll show you something. Do you know what this is? So this is a spoon. You don't know what, how much this means to me. On this trek, and a few other treks, the temperature was minus 16 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. I remember on one of the treks, we were having a summit pushes start at around 1 AM or 2 AM at night. We have a breakfast and we push for the summit. On one of the days, I lost my spoon. I woke up in the morning with two layers of gloves in a minus 16 degree, minus 20 degree environment. And we were going to have a breakfast before summit, pushing for the summit. And I didn't have my spoon. In that entire environment, to remove two layers of your blood in that ice chilling environment and put your hand to eat something, that's when I realized the power of this spoon. I come back home and I, my mom is making, must take them dal chawal, biryani, and what not, full sabji, sabji. And I saw the amount of spoons I have at my house. I realized the value of one spoon. I realized how important one spoon can become in that environment. That's when I learned my new trait of entrepreneurship on that tech. Gratitude and empathy. You have to empathize with your users. As a founder, you have to have severe gratitude towards your team members, towards your resources, towards money. I have seen a lot of my friends, a lot of my other founders, fellow founder members, after getting funding, you have to respect money, you have to respect your team members, you have to respect the idea and, and have severe empathy for the users. That's a picture of me holding the badge of honor that I got on one of the texts for showcasing leadership skills and being a very um, proactive member to help the entire team push to the summit. This is a very interesting story and the last point that I want to make of what I learned on my journey of teching. I'll just showcase this to you. So this is me walking into the mountains, randomly listening to music on the last day of my tech, suddenly there I see people coming from the left, from the right, from the top, and I, I was alone, there was nobody in front of me, nobody behind me, on the last day of the tech, just descending down, and these military guys from left, right, from the bushes, from the trees, from everywhere start coming in with guns pointing at me, where are you from? Where are you from? And they just asked me to kneel, I was kneeling with a gun on my head, and they were like, where are you from? What are you doing here? ID the cow. Can't say back hollow. Bag me care. Back hollow. And there was nobody in front of me, behind me. And I was scared, shit scared. I didn't know what to do. And this is happening in Kashmir, by the way. I was on my knees with a gun on my head, and they asked me, Who are you? I had one and a half minute. That's the best elevator pitch I have given in my life. That one and a half minute, I had to do the most important thing that a founder should do. Being able to sell yourself. In that one and a half minute, if I had not pitched myself as a safe Indian citizen of this country, I would have not been here in front of you. Being able to sell yourself is, I think, one of the most important traits that we need as founders, as designers, as innovators. If you're not able to sell yourself, you won't be able to sell your idea, your vision. People believe, your investors, your friends, your family, your mother, your everybody believes in you, not the idea, the product, or what you're building. They believe in you. If you're able to sell yourself, that's the only way that you'll be a successful entrepreneur. Life is an experience, like I said. And to conclude, all of us come across a lot of experiences and a lot of opportunities for experience in life. Life is a set of experiences, I already told you guys. But life is actually looks like this. You get experiences and opportunities every single day. As students, I'm sure all the students here have grabbed onto this opportunity to organize a TEDx event. 
I, I have immense gratitude for Somaya. I have immense gratitude for Maker Mela, the event I was part of. If I had not replied to that email by saying, yes, I want to be a part of this team, I wouldn't have been here. My entire journey, my entire talk today is based on this one particular experience day by day that I said yes to. I want all of you guys as students, whenever you get an email, whenever you get a message on your WhatsApp group, in your college, to be a part of such teams, to be a part of a committee, of a club, of a dance club, Dharma club, TEDx team, Mikhail Miller team, something else, say yes. Parents, if students, if your son or your daughter comes up to you and says that they want to stay back after college to be a part of the club, if they say that they want some extra fees to be able to study a new course or learn a new language, say yes. My mother's sitting right there, I ask her, I went up to her one day after my engineering in the final year and I said that, mom, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to do in life. And that's when an email popped up. Startup School India, 45,000 rupee course where you learn design thinking and entrepreneurship. I told my mom, can I do that? She's like, yeah, why not? She said, yes. That is where I learned about design as a career in India. And that is when I gave my exam for IIT. That one yes, a go ahead for me and a go ahead for my mother. That is why I studied in IIT Delhi today. For parents and students, all your experiences, say yes. That's it. Thank you so much. My name is Danish. I want to leave you with one last thought. Everything that I have done in my life has been fueled by passion. Nothing ever has been done half-heartedly. I'll just end this with a very short story. I always told my team members, when I led a team member of 200 people in Maker Mela, I used to take these meetings every Friday with all members sitting in the auditorium like this and sitting downstairs and I'm explaining things to them and the tasks of what to do this week. Every story ended with, yeah, dil se karo, hai to mat karo. Do it with passion or don't do it at all. Ask the members in Idil. That thing, it actually became a thing of me keeping on saying that dil se karo, dil se karo. It ended up on the hoodie of Mega Mela. That we do it with passion. Thank you. Thank you so much.